Gary Brewer and the Kentucky Ramblers celebrating 40 years. It's a 40th anniversary celebration. They have a new CD out. They've got a video that you're going to see here shortly. So we welcome them. And, and congratulations, gentlemen. 40 years. Mr. Brewer, Gary, it's uh, 40 years, I tell you what, of nothing but great bluegrass. Congratulations to you. Thank you, my friend. We appreciate it, John. We, uh been out there doing it a long time. <laughs> yeah, you have. You know what I love about bluegrass is to me, not only is it essential to Kentucky and its history, but unlike country music, it really hasn't changed that much. That sound, you know, I, I think sometimes country music tends to go a little pop, and there are now has come a time where you can't even distinguish between country music and popular music, but bluegrass is still bluegrass. Do you find that to be true, Gary? I do. Uh, we're, we've carried that tradition in our family six generations and pretty much unscathed. Now, we do a lot of original material, but the format's the same. So it's uh, what we like to call authentic music, just what we get out of the instruments. I love that. Uh, Wayne and Mason are your sons. Wayne, welcome. Thank you, sir. Mason, welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. Yeah, and congratulations to all of you. That 40 years, I, I hate to be a downer here because bluegrass <laughs> makes me happy, but that 40 years, a lot of that involved, Gary, your father, Finley, your grandfather for Mason right. and, and Wayne there. So his loss, it's only been about a month. Um, do you find yourself thinking about him whenever you pick up an instrument, I guess is my question. Absolutely. I know I do. I don't. I don't know. Uh, I'm sure that they do as well. But I do definitely. And uh, I'm living in uh, what used to be my grandpa's house now. So uh, I've been fixing it up. And I know I think about him very often. And uh, but it's it's sad. But at the same time, we knew where he was going as well. There we so, go. Uh, you know, you can't really be sad about that too much. So uh, a lot of good times. You know, a lot of traveling out on the road with him. And uh, that's what you got to think about. You know. How about you, Wayne? Yeah, like you said, I, I think about him all the time, but it's all good thoughts, John, and that's that's what matters. You know, we we don't have no regrets with him. We we always had a good time, poked fun with him, and he poked <laughs> fun with us. <laughs> and you know, I mean, uh, he lived to be 82 years old, so I, I hope we're all as lucky. Yeah, well, I'm sure he's very very proud of you, all of you. Uh, Gary, you, you had this big tour planned, and like a lot of bands, a lot of popular bands, you were going all over Europe and all over the United States, but because of COVID, it's had to be delayed, not canceled, right? Let's make sure your fans know that. That's right, John. Uh, uh, due to the pandemic and everything, we had about 38 or 9 states on the books for 2020 and uh, about a three-week tour in Europe. So it's all been uh, pushed back to 2021, hopefully. Uh, everything I opened back up, and uh, so that that's kind of what it uh, what it wound up being was everything was just postponed. We did get a few gigs in, but uh, the the big tour has been pushed to 2021 for the 40 year. So uh, we still have that going on, and the folks can uh, actually catch a chance to see us uh, one more time in 2020 uh, in December at Christmas in the Smokies. Mm -hmm. uh, down at Pigeon Forge at the Smoky Mountain Convention. Convention Center. And that'll be on Friday the 11th of December. Well, that sounds fabulous. I, all right, Mason, I want to ask you, okay, during this COVID, this, this pandemic, it, I would think for your musician that's, that's hard because a lot of your gratification, it's not all monetary, a lot of it is getting that audience feedback, especially if you have new material or a new song, and in this case, a new 40th anniversary CD. So has is, is it been hard for you during the pandemic, or do you find your creative juices are flowing pretty well now? Well, both. I'd say it's about 50-50 for me because, you know, you get a lot of time to think about things and write new material and whatnot, but also you do miss the interaction of the crowd and being up on stage as well. Wayne, what was this? What was the plan on this tour, Wayne? I, I mean, do you celebrate a lot of your old music? Do you play some of these standards? And do you introduce new product? Is, is it all the above, or what was the plan for this big anniversary celebration? Well, John, what, what we was doing is we was, like you said, we was going all over, and you can look on our website there, Brewgrass.com, showed a lot of the places that we would have went, and we'll end up going next year. But um, what, we, what the plan was is to hit as many of these venues that were still open that dad has performed at throughout his 40-year career and a lot of them still around and some of them is not but then we're going to do some new places as well and some bigger events some country music festivals and throw our bluegrass style into the country <laughs> music and uh, switch it up a little bit for them so we were doing some old stuff and some new stuff and everything in between uh, the 40 record 
was all original tunes that Dad has performed through the years and written some back even in the early 80s. And uh, we performed them with, of course, Dad, myself, Mason, and uh, Ron Stewart, and a bunch of other people that had performed with us through the years uh, with an all-star guest list, including uh, Doug Phelps of the Kentucky Headhunters, Sam Bush, who's also a, a Louisville guy, and uh, Dale Ann Bradley, Russell Moore, uh, Ralph Stanley II, Ashton Shepard, and a bunch of others. T. Graham. Wow. T. Graham Brown, yeah. A bunch, Those, of, bunch of our friends. Man, bluegrass legends. Gary, let, let's talk about that. There's some of these people that you've collaborated with, played with on stage. You know, Ralph Stanley, some of these names are legendary in bluegrass. Maybe, tell us a little bit about maybe someone who mentored you with bluegrass. Was it always your father or were there outside influences for you? Well, of course, uh, you know, everything started at home in the family. And uh, my dad and my granddaddy and all that, you know, he worked with the original Carter family back in the 20s. Woo. <laughs> so we have that lineage there, but uh, uh, yeah, you mentioned Ralph Stanley. I've got his son on this uh, 40 record, Ralph II, we call him, and a uh, longtime friend, you know. And uh, but Ralph Sr., uh, the one that most people knows, you know, of uh, uh, of the uh, uh, latter years, uh, he's passed away. But uh, he started when I was 14 years old. I opened a show for him just over here in Shepherdsville, Kentucky. And uh, I was 14 years old, and he heard something in me and immediately booked me at his festival in McClure, Virginia. And I played it many, many, many years, John. And uh, he'd just always say, uh, Stretch, that's my nickname. He'd say, Stretch, how many days you going to work for me next year? <laughs> and, you know, and then, John, once I got up and got established and started having my own festivals and concerts, of course, I'd have Dr. Ralph Stanley there and return that favor, you know. And we were great friends all along, and uh, that's continued into his son and, of course, my sons. And that see how that continues, you know. And, and that's what this music is uh, so much about is the continuing that legacy uh, in family and people that you've worked with. And then it's passed down generation to generation. So as that continues, uh, with with my sons too, uh, and then Ralph Stanley's son and Dell McCurry's son. I had the Traveling McCurries on the 40-year record uh, with us, and so it, it's a great tradition that's going on. But yet it's still original material, but we're just continuing that legacy. Before we go to break, Wayne Mason, I, I want to ask you: there has to be a lot of pride involved, and probably a lot of joy as well, playing with your father. And you all have that that bluegrass in your blood; it's in your DNA. So it's almost cliche, but I'll go ahead and ask it. So, if one word, if you could use one word to describe what it's like to play your music with your family, with your brother, with your dad, formerly with your grandfather, one word. I'll go to you first, Wayne. Wayne, what what would that one word be? Awesome. <laughs> awesome. That's perfect. It was great, man, and it, it always has been. You know, it's 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 just great. All right, and you're up next, Mason. What would you what would you say? Can't hardly beat that, man. It's just it <laughs> is. I have to agree with him. It's awesome. It is awesome. In every facet of the word. Yep. And you guys are awesome, and you're going to get to hear a little bit of that coming up. We're going to play a video. We'll have Gary set it up later. We'll take a little break here. So if you want to get in on the 40th year anniversary, the big celebration, then you'll be able to do that next on Wave Three Listens Live. Gary Brewer and the Kentucky Ramblers right here. I have the CD, and this is the 40th anniversary celebration. To talk a little bit about the popularity of the CD, it's, it's selling like hotcakes. Wayne, <laughs> talk to me a little bit about where you guys stand as far as bluegrass billboard charts and the popularity with your fans of this new CD. Yes, sir, John. Uh, the first week in August, uh, the record went to number one on the global billboard bluegrass albums charts which uh, was totally mind-blowing to us, and uh, especially during this global pandemic, all right, because most of the time at our bluegrass festivals, we've always prided ourselves with, we sell most of our products there in person. And, uh, but, you know, with this, people's been forced to buy them online, and uh, so that's wonderful. It's been up on, uh, in the top five, which is still amazing to us, for 16 weeks. This week is 16 Ooh. weeks, and we're number one again, which is, Again, just two times unbelievable for yeah. for all of us. So we're we're very proud of the project. Um, this this is uh, probably my favorite project that we've ever done, and I know the guys probably feel the same way. And it's got a lot of lot of recognition globally, 
and uh, which we're we're super proud of this yeah, year. Yeah, Mason. From what I understand, now you this is new. This is not new territory for you guys, but you guys are up for some Grammy nominations. Is that right? Absolutely, we're up in six categories. Uh, for the Grammy Awards, what is it? What year is it? 63rd. 63rd annual. Yeah. Annual Grammy nomination. Well, congratulations. Uh, wow. All right, so I'm going to let you do the introduction here, if you would. Gary, introduce the video. Tell us a little bit about what we're going to see and hear. Okay, this, uh, this video is a song I wrote called Big Train. I wrote it real early in my career, about 15 or 16 years old. And um, uh, it's got our good friend Doug Phelps of the Kentucky Headhunters. And on the video, it has a little cameo of the Kentucky Headhunters, our dear friend. So I uh, hope you enjoy Big Train. Here we go. That's about as close you're going to get to a live performance. Fantastic standing ovation. That's the 40th anniversary celebration. Gary Brewer and the Kentucky Ramblers. Gary, I have to ask you now, there's obvious, I mean, you hear the way you guys harmonize so well. Some of that has to be the fact that you've been around each other your entire lives. Your voices are probably sim similar, and they blend well together. It, do you find that to be true? Sure do. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, when you're from the same region, and uh, same household, your phrasing and all those things uh, become almost, uh, in lieu of Halloween, supernatural. You know, it uh, <laughs> it actually ties together uh, both my sons. We all talk alike. Uh, we uh, we act alike. Sometimes we smell alike. It's uh, it, it's all good in the neighborhood. But uh, you know, it's uh, you you ask earlier. Give me one word. Uh, that you asked the boys about, uh, you know, about our performing together and uh, night after night and all that. I'm going to say blessed. Oh, that's a good word. I'll tell you one thing. You may, you may look alike, sound alike, smell alike, but, but as far as the beards go, Gary, it's you that's bringing sexy back. <laughs> I'm telling you. That's right. <laughs> well, you know, John, that, that, uh, I always had the sideburns, you know, and they, the boys always had this beard, like I told you earlier, and I said, uh, uh, I said, well, during the pandemic, we couldn't go nowhere, and also, it was my excuse, you know, when my dad fell ill, uh, he couldn't shave because his platelets were low, so I said, well, I didn't want him to feel alone, so I let mine grow, and then I got guys like you, John, that says, oh, man, it looks great, keep it, so <laughs> I don't know what we'll do with it, but I'm going to keep it. Because Santa Claus is coming to town. Yeah, you're, you're going to have to pick up about 100 more pounds, though. You're in too good a shape for Santa. Okay, so Wayne, tell them. For folks who want to get, Wayne or Mason, who want to get this CD, and I recommend that you do so, how do they do that? 
bluegrass.com. You can go and do it directly from us, digital to download, or the physical product. Uh, there's different packages we have where we can sign it, give you posters, shirts, hats, all the merch. Or you can go if you're big on, you know, iTunes, Amazon Music, anywhere you can get music, it's on there. Digital right. partners. Gentlemen, thank you very much. I really enjoyed the conversation. really enjoyed the music. I can't wait to play this CD. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. See, I'm already Always. saying I'm claiming it. You're not getting it back. <laughs>